Let me get my PowerPoint going here, apologize, and we'll roll. Uh, everyone, I'd like you to do today, what I'd like you to do today is kind of sit back and kind of relax. Uh, and I say that because I'm going to throw a whole lot of information at you today. Uh, and today is about adding tools to your tool belt, meaning that I hope that you get something today that you that you did not have before. Uh, a pause too, if everyone could please mute uh, so that we're not hearing your conversations, uh, uh, that would be greatly appreciated. Uh, this is a partnership that we've had now for almost a year, and we're going to go on for several years. Uh, this, this program is obviously uh, sponsored by uh, Commonwealth of Pennsylvania Office of Victim Advocate, Susanna Estrella. We greatly appreciate the backing of their agency to facilitate this training. Uh, and of course, our training partners, Karen and JR, we're an awesome team. We work well together. Uh, we, uh, we have fun, but we, we call each other out too on things. And it's an awesome partnership, and I enjoy it very thoroughly. One thing with uh, COVID is, you know, we've been forced into this Zoom atmosphere. As I looked at the attendees today, I saw a large contingent from uh, state parole agencies as well as uh, county parole or probation rather, and also uh, advocates as well. Large presence of probation and parole today. Uh, I'm excited about that. Uh, today, we're going to throw a lot of information at you. And what I want you to do is kind of consider the paradigms that you're in professionally and personally when you hear this information. Uh, consider how you can use it for victims of domestic violence, obviously, is our, our push today. But I want you to consider your use in your personal life and your professional life, uh, whether it be in managing clients or managing victims, giving victims assistance, or when you're conducting criminal investigations. I actually see some familiar names in state parole too. Uh, I'd like to mention that I'm, I'm still involved, although I'm retired from law enforcement, I'm still involved uh, heavily with monitoring of sex offenders in that I am a polygraph examiner. I've been one since 92 and I conduct post-conviction sexual offender tests here in Harrisburg, uh, normally one day a week, up to three days a week, doing three clients a day. So I see a lot of familiar names where I know you're getting my reports. Now you have my face. Now you have my contact information. If I can ever do anything for you in that regard, please feel free to reach out to me. Um, I have a unique skill set, right? It comes from 32 years of law enforcement, 12 years with Springsbury Township Police in York County, Pennsylvania. I was a detective for eight of my years there, and I spent 21 years with the Attorney General's Office. My last eight years, I was the statewide supervisor of our computer and cell phone forensics uh, unit where we would deploy two search warrants in uh, forensic trucks that we, we would actually do on-site previews of hard drives and uh, cell phones and finding evidence specifically geared towards more uh, child exploitation cases. Uh, I've been involved in a, a lot of different things in my career to include hidden cameras, to include a lot of different things that we're gonna talk about today. I'm excited to present this information for, to you. Uh, we have a two hour program. What we're gonna do is run about 50 minutes, take, or an, I'm sorry, run an hour, take a 10 minute break and reconvene. When I said, I want you to relax, I want you to relax because you're gonna get this PowerPoint, okay? You're gonna get this information and some other resources. I'm not gonna waste time here going through a disclaimer with you and reading the fine, uh, fine print here. Essentially what we're presenting here today is a whole lot of information. I'm not, I'm not condoning or supporting any of the products or apps that we talked about. I'm not guaranteeing anyone's personal safety if they use all the things that we talk about today. They're tools on your tool belt. It's all about when we look down, having additional tools, having resources. Additionally today, uh, at the end of this uh, program, uh, tomorrow, Karen will actually send out a notice uh, regards to uh, your certificates. Once she sends that, I will respond to all of you with an Outlook download link, which will have the PowerPoint presentation and also two different documents that I'm gonna place in there that are resources for you. And we'll talk through them after the first break, but I wanna kind of get going here and plow through this information. Again, today we're de dealing with more so domestic violence. That's what we're dealing with, victims of domestic violence and all the different things uh, that are out there. We're gonna be talking about common technologies that are used in everyday life and can obviously be misused. Technology is awesome. We love getting that new app. We love exploring the app store and seeing all the things that we can do in these apps. But it's a double-edged sword, it is, and we're gonna talk through that. We're gonna explain how some of these technologies work, the latest trends, demonstrate how they're misused, 
discuss, discuss ways to prevent and mitigate their use, and obviously provide investigative tips for looking at these things. Times have changed substantially. I've been in law enforcement uh, 32 years. I've been out two years. Uh, as I sit back and look at technology over my career, I mean, uh, we started out with like uh, regular regular phone on the wall, right? Then we went to the bag phones. Then we went to the, the cell phones. Technology has exploded. And that in itself, uh, in the regards to domestic violence victims and stalking victims is significant because we have our phone everywhere we go. Our phone is an extension of our body. And that phone, although it's awesome for all the personal things we do every day, because we use it every single step of our day, we can track someone as far as what their most intimate thoughts are, as far as what contacts they're having, what communications they're having, their internet searches, their Wi-Fi connectivity as they travel through, their use of ways and other apps for travel. Uh, you can literally track someone and every action that they do. And when that's used by a domestic violence offender or a stalker, and some of the apps that we talk about that are potentially can be installed on these devices, it's very alarming because they can actually almost get inside our mind. So the old days of domestic violence and the things that you would look for have, have changed substantially because now Imagine the ability to control and manipulate and uh, just have total power over someone if you would have total access to their phone and know everything that they do every moment of their day. It's horrifying. Uh, and think about the different roles that we're in, you know, uh, as far as parents, grandparents, nieces, nephews that we have in our lives. Think of all the different relationships that you have and apply today's knowledge to all of them. But again, the focus is absolutely domestic violence. Our ultimate safe uh, goal today is to provide you information so to protect your personal safety, uh, your victim, your victims, uh, domestic violence victims, stalking victims, your personal safety, everyone's safety is the ultimate goal. And, and to achieve that, obviously, we have to gain information. So what we're going to talk about are methods of digital stalking and harassment. We're going to talk about spreading sensitive images of information. Uh, from to your family and friends, impersonating a victim online, placing ads and things claiming you're the victim, uh, purporting the victim might be a prostitute, providing their address, installing spyware on victims' devices, uh, ways to monitor people through legitimate apps like Find My Friends or parental control apps or theft trackers, and the use of social media. Everything we do today is out there. So many people are involved in all sorts of different apps and, and uh, different chat apps. It, it's, it's insane, our communication level. So what we're looking at is individuals, right? So we all have those people at work that we go to that uh, if we had a computer problem, we would go to that person definitively. And then other people that we work with, we know they can barely turn on a, a computer. They can barely find the power button. So each one of you, as you come to this presentation, have different experiences and stories and experiences in life, whether it's professional, personal, uh, you know, just look at ourselves and our use of technology. I'd like you to reflect upon yourself. Look at yourself and say, hey, how technologically advanced am I? Am I a one, meaning like minimal ability, or a five, meaning very technological? Are we using social networks? How many of you are not on Facebook? I mean, everyone's out on social apps. We're out there. We're connecting with families. We're doing legitimate things to stay in contact with family. But there's a dark side to that too, and we'll talk through that. How many of us use social media? It's out there, we use it. And even if you're one of those very protective individuals that says, hey, I'm not a Facebook guy, not doing it, not crossing the line, I'm not gonna go out there on social media. Perhaps you work in law enforcement and, and you're very sensitive to security and personal security. Your family members are gonna post things. They're gonna post pictures of you, they're gonna post things. So even if you're totally secure in your own mind, you're not really secure. Uh, we're going to kind of blow through some slides here because when you look at the total slides here, I think we have over 300. Uh, these are here as references. Obviously, every, st every state now and federal government also has crimes related to stalking laws. Uh, essentially, a common definition here is going to be the threatening behavior or unwanted advances directed at another using the internet and other forms of digital and computer communications. Bureau of Justice statistics, you know, we're going to blow through this as well. Uh, there's different things that can be involved here. Unwanted phone calls, unwanted letters or emails, spying on the victim, 
showing up at uh, places without a legitimate reason, waiting at places for the victim, leaving unwanted items, presents, or, flower, uh, or flowers, posting information, or spreading rumors about the victim on the internet. Uh, that's from the Bureau of Justice Statistics. In Pennsylvania, we have a very uh, specific law stalking. It's there for a, re uh, as a resource for you. I'm going to blow through that. Let's get into a video uh, here real quick. It was six o'clock today. A 66-year-old landlord is facing prison after he confessed to setting up a hidden spy camera in the room of a tenant and then used the video to try and extort her for sex. Barton Peters is in studio control with this story tonight. Barton. Well, Brian and Sue, the official charge is called capturing images of an unclothed person and is a crime taken seriously by police because it doesn't just impact the victim, it has a chilling effect on all of us. John Michael Johnson faces as much as 10 years in prison after he pleaded guilty to trying to force a woman renting a room at this Alpine Township mobile home into having sex with him by using images of her secretly taken in her own bedroom. According to Kent County Sheriff's detectives, Johnson used a device that can be ordered online for as little as $60. The spying itself can be done so much more covertly than it ever could be before. Uh, uh, that it's becoming difficult to detect. But more high-end devices are available that make detection even more difficult. Even we have to send it to a lab for the lab to tell us, yes, this is a recording device. You know, it's, it's just, it's not that obvious um, to be able to even tell when it's hands. In September, the woman told police at Johnson and Johnson said he would expose the affair publicly if she did not have sex with the landlord. Among the text messages were statements like, quote, you will be naked from now on and you will obey only me. And, quote, get used to following orders. The extortion piece in this case is unique. Um, I think it's more common that uh, the suspect collect the images or videos and, and save them for themselves without the victim ever knowing. I talked to the victim who did not want to appear on camera, but she said her sense of safety has been shattered. Police say they take these high-tech spying cases seriously. When there's an invasion of privacy or when someone loses their privacy, uh, there's sort of a shockwave that travels not only through that person's life, but through the lives of everyone that's aware. Sergeant Ruin says staying alert and trusting your instincts are the best defense. If they suspect an item is out of place for some reason, like that's an odd place for a smoke detector, or that's an odd place for whatever, um, we want people to follow their gut. Johnson remains free on bond and he's scheduled for sentencing on February 5th. Reach out to him and his attorney. We didn't hear back from them. In studio control, Barton Dieters, 24 hour news eight. What I'd like you to consider here is th this is a scenario where obviously landlords involved, they plant the camera. It's interesting what the detective actually said, and that is something so true as we reflect on ourselves, those that are in law enforcement, probation, parole, uh, or law enforcement itself. Uh, consider Pennsylvania, a, a state that has over 1,400 police departments, some of which may be only a couple officers, uh, all the way to the city of Philadelphia, city of Pittsburgh, which anywhere from 1,200 to 4,800 state police, which is up near 5,000. We have inconsistent uh, quality as far as technological ability here. If you had a case involving this, you would most likely have to seek out either the attorney general's office, the Pennsylvania State Police, or a federal agency to actually assist you in actually going into monitoring. So it's, it's kind of interesting to me uh, that technology is so big, but law enforcement is behind the curve here. We're lacking training in technology and also in computers and cell phones, obviously. I mean, consider your own roles as probation parole agents going out to do an inspection on a client and perhaps you only have the ability to go through a phone and look at the content. Uh, we're missing big things, as you'll see later on. It was six o'clock today. A 66-year-old landlord is facing prison after he confessed to setting up a hidden spy. My mistake here. We're going to move on to another one here quick. Startling new information about a story we brought you earlier in the week, one dealing with a tracking device. You know, on Tuesday, we told you Knoxville police were searching for Rodney Hensley. He was wanted for stalking, taken into custody yesterday. Tonight, we are digging into a police report that we got our hands on, and it really paints the picture of what happened. First off, we are getting to see the tracking device we mentioned earlier in the week. This is what you see here. 
Now, the report also says the victim in this case is Hensley's wife, but the two are separated, living at different homes. Knoxville police reportedly got involved after she said that Hensley, well, sent screenshots from a GPS tracking device to her. An officer checked the woman's car and sure enough, not a track. Well, it's a brand GPS device on the underside of her car held there with a magnet. Hensley, by the way, is also charged with violation of electronic tracking of motor vehicles. So there are the GPS devices that you saw, and you'll see some more later in the program. Very humbling. Uh, when I was in law enforcement, I, I was involved with a, a technical services unit that we had that would actually do covert GPS installation that was court ordered, where teams would go out actually under cover of darkness, obviously, and do installs of GPS tracking devices that were court ordered. Uh, the devices that law enforcement used oh, were several, several thousand dollars and uh, required uh, actually time to actually install. And they were much larger than the actual devices that you're seeing here. And you'll see a little bit later. Starling. So what can we protect, do to protect ourselves? We got to get knowledge. We have to have knowledge. We got to know what we're looking for. A lot of the technology that we're going to talk about today can be in plain view. You, you wouldn't even know it's there. And we're going to walk through and talk through that. Technology is constantly changing too. Typically in a, a day for me, I spend my first hour, hour and a half drinking a coffee and I'm on blogs with related to technology, related to computer and cell phone forensics because it changes all the time. New technology is constantly evolving. It's becoming higher, higher in uh, technology and the devices that can be used to monitor us are becoming smaller and smaller and their capabilities are very extreme. I wanna throw something out to you too for you members of law enforcement doxing. Uh, it's something that's huge right now as far as information that we have posted online, information that's publicly uh, publicly accessible about us through name searches that are done through different websites that are public. If you Google your own name, it's very humbling to see that you're going to find your own address. So personal protection of information and that resource guide that you'll get later on today, there's going to be an opt out instructions for a lot of those sites to try to remove your photos from different websites that have them on the street views and so forth. I wanna throw that out to you. And there's just an example of different doxing that's been done across the United States. Uh, specifically, this is dealing with, with Portland uh, and how many officers had their information thrown out there. Personal protection. And again, not just related to law enforcement officers, but related to domestic violence victims. Because if someone wants to track someone, if someone wants to find out where they are, they can do it pretty easily. Okay, we got another video clip on the air tags here for you. The team investigates tracked and followed. You may have heard of air tags and other new mobile tools that can help you find lost items. But criminals can also use them to stalk you and steal. Consumer investigator Jason Knowles is finding out how they work and how to stop them from tracking you. Nationwide, there have been reports of Apple Air Tags being planted on people and their belongings. They can even be used to help thieves steal cars. Now, the I team is finding out how you can avoid being tracked and followed. For just under 30 bucks, you can buy an Apple Air Tag, and in just minutes, it is synced to your phone. The Air Tags use an extensive network and the built in Find My iPhone app to keep track of your wallet, keys, luggage, or purse but wrongdoers are seizing on the technology. I'm gonna get in the car and see how I get tracked. Okay, I drove to Orleans and Oak. I have the AirTag on hand. We will see if the map tracks me. The phone the AirTag was connected to was about a mile away and the AirTag locked into my exact location, raising the concern of stalking. I really had no idea that this was even happening to me until the next morning when I woke up and noticed there was a notification on my phone. Victim Courtney Chandler wasn't able to find the air tag on her, but she told our ABC station in Philadelphia that she received an alert on her phone saying one was near. Here's how those alerts work. A notification like this one pops up within several hours of a mystery air tag being detected by another phone. Apple says it's working on making that notification come even earlier. The push alert says air tag found moving with you. The location of this air tag can be be seen by the owner. Apple saying it innovated the first ever proactive system to alert you of unwanted tracking. We hope this starts an industry trend for others to also provide these sorts of proactive warnings in their products. 
If you don't have an iPhone, you can download an Apple app to detect unwanted air tags. Most bags at the bottom have foam or interfacing that creates an extra layer of padding. Someone could just slide a tracker underneath that. And you would never know. And you would never know. Steven Winkleman is a mobile analyst for PC Mag. He showed the IT team where you should look in case the bad guys hide air tags and other similar devices like the Tile brand trackers, which can be synced to any phone. Tiles and air tags can also be hidden on your car behind the license plate or you could place it under here. Another would be under the wheel well. Winkleman says car thieves can then use the tech to study your habits. You can say, okay, this person gets home every night at six. They will leave every morning at six, so maybe I'll pick it up at midnight. I actually know people that have got the notification, like there's an air tag in your car. Customers at the Apple store in Lincoln Park are expressing concerns and they say the tech can help. Yeah, I'm thinking of it like a tracking device on my car. There's been so many carjackings. There is also a sound which goes off between 8 and 24 hours after an AirTag has been separated from its owner. Apple says it's a randomized time window to prevent bad actors from using an AirTag to track someone. Apple plans on making the sound even louder. Apple also says it works closely with safety groups and law enforcement and that it has identified more ways to update safety warnings. Tile tells the IT team it has an app on the way soon for smartphones, which can easily scan for and detect nearby Tile devices and identify if an unknown device is near them. And that Tile will also provide resources to victims about how to stay safe if they suspect they are being tracked. So what if you find a tracking device on you? Call police. They may be able to find the person who activated it by checking the device ID. Don't destroy it because there is a battery in them. Um, and that battery can combust. To avoid this altogether, you can turn off Bluetooth and location services on your phones. Also take a quick look at your belongings inside your purse, backpack, and pockets. Make sure there's not a mystery device tracking you. Jason Knowles, ABC7 Eyewitness News. Well, it's an IPI team. And so initially when the air tags came out, everyone that's geared towards technology, it's a great thing, right? It's the newest thing. So everyone wants to jump on it and go to it, obviously. Uh, at the time it came out, actually, I was in the process of preparing a trip to uh, Disney with my oldest granddaughter. And initially my thought was, hey, let's get an air tag. Then we'll know where she is. But then common sense and my background kicked in and was like, no, nah, let's kind of pause on it. Initially, when the air tags came out, they didn't have that warning capability. So Apple quickly reacted to it and has that technology there. So you're gonna get an alert as to the presence of it. And we're gonna walk you through with some screenshots uh, a little bit later, how to uh, see and monitor whether an AirTag is connected to you. But imagine the ability of a domestic violence victim throwing an AirTag on a car or putting it in your purse uh, of the victim and having the ability to track their every move. It's real time, so it's live time movement. Uh, there's other technologies that can do the same thing. The air tag is kind of unique, though, because it's smaller than a quarter. Uh, and unlike the tile, which is a, a competitor, the air tag actually has a small battery in it that's similar to a watch battery. So one time purchase of 25 to 30 bucks, you can actually replace the battery and it can last for a very long time. Another unique nuance to it is that there is actually if you take out the battery, there is a serial number inside the AirTag. Now, Apple doesn't track those serial numbers, but that can be a potential value in an investigation when you're trying to connect a particular AirTag to a phone. Identifiers will be present on a phone as well. So just tips to keep in mind if you deal with, deal with the AirTags. The AirTag security that's in place now would be if you go to your Find My on your iPhone homepage and go to Me, and then you can click on Items. And then you can see there through the screenshots, uh, you can tell whether an AirTag is connected or, or not, and if so, to remove it. Uh, so AirTag, Apple has stepped up the security in this context. Again, it's a, it's a place of, it definitely has a value, but I'll, I'll say with caution, a lot of the blogs, a lot of the technology blogs are still having some criticisms on it and some concerns for safety. So I still personally do not have an AirTag. I'll wait another six months, eight months, let them work out all the quirks and then take another look.
And again, there's just some additional uh, screenshots. You want to have the safety made, uh, measures features enabled on your phone per the screenshots so that you get those alerts, item safety alerts. So Bluetooth tracking, other mechanisms, Tile. Tile is an awesome thing. Uh, when Tile initially came out, it, it was like the premiere. Uh, it's awesome for tracking people, for tracking items. My son, uh, he's 26 years old now, but when he was about 22, he would lose everything. He would lose his phone, his wallet. So we ended up getting him a bunch of tiles. Uh, ultimately, we, we gave him like five for Christmas. He, he was so absent-minded for a while. He actually threw them away by mistake at Christmas. So uh, he, he got it sorted out now. He, he does use tiles and pretty much everything, the value that he has is connected to one. And they're definitely a, a good app. Uh, we're not going to clink the, the link here, but if you go to the tile app, you're going to see that they have many uh, modifications of size uh, as far as the devices. You have one you can put in your wallet that's like a credit card. You have the one that's small square there that you can put on your, uh, your keychain. The AirTag is unique in that it only has that one size. So it's just that one device. And in fact, if you go to purchase one and you want to get it attached to your keys, you have to buy an, an actual AirTag holder for your keychain, which is actually $30. It's more than the actual tracking device. So again, just different items to be aware of uh, as far as like a victim of domestic violence talking about the fact that they believe their stalker or their offender is, is aware of their constant presence. These are things you need to be looking for as far as on the person and on, on the uh, vehicle of your, your victim. Yeah, Houston police investigated this case and found this tiny device was registered to this woman's ex who is now being prosecuted. It has been quite an ordeal. She still fears for her safety. I feel like I'm always looking over my shoulder. For months, this woman says when she looked up, her ex was there in a restaurant outside her house and even in another city. She thought she was being followed, but one day, months after she ended the relationship, she was rummaging through her center console looking for lotion and found this. It was a little bit shocking. I, in a million years, never, it never occurred to me uh, that that could be possible and it instantly, everything made sense. It's a tile, a Bluetooth tracking device that can help you find things like keys or wallets that people often lose. This woman believes her ex was using it to track her. They're used for good, but they're also used for bad. She wants to remain anonymous because she fears retaliation, but also wants to warn people about these tiny high-tech gadgets. I think that's what's important is that for people that are in a domestic violence situation are in stalking situations to know that should be a thought, that should be a consideration because technology has advanced so much. Her ex has been charged with a misdemeanor, unlawful installation of a tracking device. She thinks the consequence should be harsher. I don't know how that's not stalking. Technology has advanced way faster than the laws have. Tile did not respond to our request for comment. Their website says the device shouldn't be used unlawfully or for criminal purposes. The victim says it was difficult for her and HPD to get information associated associated with the Tile account. They protect the abuser, most assuredly. And to this day, despite police and prosecutor involvement, her fear is still there. Like so it's a balance. It's a balance between uh, personal protection of information and our victims' rights there. So a lot of the technology companies aren't real forthcoming with information without a court order or a search warrant. So let's talk about what's out there. Uh, also with regards to the uh, air, or I'm sorry, the, the tile, just a point of information too, or I'm sorry, yeah, the tile, is that you have the ability with the tile also to activate the tile to locate the phone that it's connected to. So if you lose your phone, you can also use the tile to locate a phone. So let's talk about the different things that are out there that we have an uh, aware or available to anyone that really has a credit card that are spy gadgets that are used to monitor people without their knowledge and consent. Uh, you have video surveillance and counter surveillance, which is being used more and more against individuals and police. Those of you in police work, you, you realize so, something that my training officer way back when I started told me, and that's that a quote he gave me was, whatever you do, pretend that you're being videotaped. 
And that was back in 1987. We'll look at 2022. Everything you do is being uh, taped. Everything you do, a witness is coming out, witnesses are ob observing you, they're recording your actions in your official capacity. And, uh, and quite frankly, they have the legal right to do so. So it's about awareness, it's about safety. Uh, there's a lot of apps out there too that will, uh, if an individual is, for example, stopped by the police, they have apps now that are installed on their devices where they can hit the app and it automatically starts recording the interaction with law enforcement and simultaneously sends a text alert to whoever they have chosen to be the designated people. It could be family members, friends, and it alerts them that, hey, I've just been stopped by law enforcement and it gives them the location. Personal uh, security and awareness for law enforcement. If you're on a traffic stop, if you're interacting with citizens, be aware to look, look to your six, cover your six at all times because people are getting alerts and all of a sudden you have three, four people showing up at a traffic stop, just personal security again. But again, going back to what's out there, the things that are out there are readily available, they're inexpensive, and they're simple to use. You don't need to be a technological genius to figure this stuff out. It's, uh, it's amazing. And you'll see very shortly how, uh, how, how crazy it is. Uh, our best friend is Amazon. So how else can we be tracked? Well, we can be tracked a variety of different ways. The photos we take. Think of the photos that we take and think of where we place them. We place them on Facebook, we place them on Instagram, we place them on all sorts of different chatting apps that are publicly accessible or at least to people that we've invited. So we post those pictures. Well, there's information behind the pictures and we have to be aware of that. Uh, the use of our cell phones, the installing of spyware on the cell phones, uh, smartphone apps, our vehicle GPS, social network sites, using geo uh, tracking, geotagging on sites like Foursquare, Google Latitude and Facebook places. There's all sorts of ways that we can be tracked. Let's start with our photos and our videos. Photography has come so far. I, I recently updated from an uh, iPhone 7 to a, uh, to a 12 uh, and it's insane. I got a 12 Pro Max, now they got the 14 out. And if you take pictures with your iPhone or, or, or your Android, the quality is unbelievable. The quality of these pictures is just phenomenal. It really almost goes away from ever having a need for a specialized camera anymore. The technologies that are out there with, with the phone is just unbelievable. The optic digital zoom capabilities, also infrared sensitivity, uh, it's insane. Uh, and it's great for us uh, as far as taking pictures of normal things that every, everyone would engage in every day. Uh, and they also have tremendous storage capacities as far as the capability of storing data. These are just some common uh, micro SD cards, uh, you know, for, for individuals in law enforcement. I mean, a whole case can be based on a simple micro SD card that's the size of your thumb. Uh, the number of images and videos that can be stored in these small storage devices is crazy. And you're going to see a listing of it really soon. But just things to keep in mind if you're trying to try, trying to find evidence and it's gonna be located on a memory card or an SD card, uh, you have to be alert to the fact that the search you're doing is actually a full scope search. It's like a drug search. The items are this small and can be actually concealed anywhere. And they actually make concealment devices so you can hide these devices in like a fake coin or small devices. The storage capabilities on these memory cards, if you look at this uh, graphic here, uh, a 128 card uh, with it set for four megapixels, you're talking 91,000 images. I mean, this is crazy, the ability of and storage. I mean, remember when computers came out, it was like uh, the size of your hard drive. Now look at it. Now it's like, oh, you only have one terabyte? I, I have five terabytes. It's like, we really don't need all that space, but the storage capabilities are huge. And again, there's just the graphics going through a one terabyte SD card. So let's talk about pictures. Pictures are awesome, right? Uh, as we look at our own personal cell phones, look at how many pictures you have on your phone. We take pictures of everything, of what we eat, of where we are, of everything in, in the world. Uh, it's not uncommon for me doing the cell phone forensics job to have 60,000 images on a, on a cell phone. The storage capabilities are there. Uh, and, and people just take them and take them and they don't get rid of them, they save them. Let's start with Google Images. Google Image is a particular website associated with Google, Google Image, and you can search Google Images based on the use of facial recognition. Uh, so for example, here, say you have a domestic violence victim who's attempting to 
step out and start start part of her life again. And she's going on dating apps and she's using images to uh, to, to identify who she is, but she's using perhaps a fake name to, to for personal protection and safety. Uh, say she uses a Google image, uh, or I'm sorry, she uses an image and say it's from her LinkedIn or from another uh, account that's uh, posted publicly. Well, it's kind of concerning because what you do is you actually go to Google Images and per the graphic on your display, you click on the camera icon and you upload an image that you're searching for. In this particular case, what I did is this is my middle child. This is my daughter, Caitlin. Uh, this is an image that uh, I had of her and she actually used this on a LinkedIn account and you're gonna see the abilities here. So say your domestic violence victim used a picture that's somewhere out there on the internet in another form and they post it on a dating site and say they say her name is Jen Smith or whatever name she uses and I'm a potential uh, stalker or I'm the domestic violence uh, offender and I have that image. All I would do is load that image into Google Images and here in the case of my daughter, Caitlin, uh, it identifies her immediately just by the image. It goes to the website that is posted on, which is where she works. It identifies where she works and then also goes into, they actually did a profile on her for the business that she worked for. And in this particular posting, it discusses uh, personal information about her. So now as a stalker, if she was on a dating site with that image and she was using a fraudulent name for her, her personal security and protection, and I'm aware of this capabilities, now I identified her real name, and now I know real things about her. So again, power and information, ability to manipulate and uh, you know, facilitate bad things. Behind our images are things that we don't know about and don't see, they're called metadata. And uh, it's exchangeable image file format, EXIF data. It's behind every image and it's behind every picture. So when you take an image, it's not included on the bottom there, it's, it's included in the metadata, the things we can't see. And in fact, this kind of data uh, includes a, a SHA value, a hash value for that image, which is like a fingerprint. And actually law enforcement currently uses this technology in peer-to-peer -peer file sharing programs that are used for sharing and distrib distribution of child pornography images and videos in that they have the known child pornography database from the National Center for Missing and Exploited Children down in Washington, DC. And the use of these programs, they go out and they search for anyone that has known child pornography. And when you're engaged in file sharing, it identifies people and the technology they have to do that is all based on that data behind the picture. So like in this case, I could sit here and you can see my old iPhone 7 Plus there, uh, simply going into your computer, right clicking on it, and going to properties, we can bring up certain information about your camera. Like in this particular picture, I can tell you that is my place of true tranquility and peace. That is on a lake that I go to and visit frequently, and I love it there. But right now, I could tell you it's anywhere. I could tell you it's in the Finger Lakes in New York. I could tell you it was up in Northern Pennsylvania, and you really have no idea. But when we go into the properties of any photo, what we find is if the person has certain uh, location and other abilities enabled on their device, it gives us additional information. So here we're looking at that picture and now we have GPS coordinates, which I could go to a, uh, a program online and do it, but there's simpler ways to do it. And we're gonna talk through that. EXIF data, information transmitted with the photo and it's when you email it, when you text it, when you upload it to a social network site, it all goes with the photo, unless you do certain things. Facebook has been telling us about this since 2018. They tell us that, hey, when you post images, be, be aware that information will go with the photo. So it's things we know about, but again, it's like any app we install, it's like anything we, we do on our computer or our, our cell phone, we always hit the accept, 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 and just agree with everything. And we never really read the fine, fine print because we don't have time. We're too busy. It's always been there, and now you know it's there. It's kind of interesting to me because uh, as you as you get this information, what I did is explore different uh, family members and kind of not that I was stalking them. Uh, I simply went out and said, "Okay, well, who has their location settings set properly for security purposes?" And very 
quickly I was able to identify which relative didn't have their guard up and which one did. Uh, so, I mean, you can do that to yourself. You can do that to your family, your children. And obviously with domestic violence victims, we want to talk to them about this and we want to have them pause. Again, we, we can't live uh, we can't live life like uh, in a fetal position in our basement all the time. We have to live life. And what you need to do as an individual and as you're dealing with your victims of domestic violence is each individual has to do a personal assessment of where they are security wise and what they feel they need to do to step things up and to make things safer. Uh, if you have no threats, then it's one thing. Uh, but two, you need to consider based on your role, if you're in law enforcement, you need to have protectors up there. And there's entire guides on how to lock down basically all your information. But in reality, too, there's so many different ways. Uh, it's tough to do. It's very tough to do. And it's time consuming. So that same photo, this is a website, publicly accessible website, no, mem no membership uh, required, no fee required, www.pick2map.com. Again, you'll get it in the PowerPoint presentation. And what you simply do here is you go to this website, you select the photo file that you want to be involved here. And in this case, we chose that picture, same picture we looked at before. And when I load it to the site, what's it give me? Well, it gives me an exact map and location of those GPS coordinates. So now you know that I'm not in the Finger Lakes. I'm not in Northern Pennsylvania. When you look at the left side there, you see the camera I use, which is an Apple iPhone 7 Plus. It was taken back on June 29th of 2018 and the address is there. And I can tell you the address is 100% correct. That's exactly where I was. And that is in Frontenac, which is in Ontario, Canada. Additionally, what you get from the same website is a whole slew of information about the camera settings. Obviously, none of that is really a value to a stalker, but it shows uh, coordinates and uh, longitude, latitude, uh, and actually altitude too. And that's kind of an interesting feature here, the altitude. That's actually required by the FCC now, uh, so that when 911 uh, is involved and, and they're looking at GPS locations, that they know the height where you are, so that if you're in a populated area like a city, they know what floor you're on of a particular building. But that's the information we get from that background data. So if you're in Windows, you just go to the Windows Photo Viewer uh, and you do the right click, go to Properties, and you have those options there. Now, one thing I'll say to you as well is on the bottom of that screen, the previous screen where we did that and we went to properties, there's also an option at the bottom there where you can select remove the data. So you can do it from your own computer actually, and you can remove select data or all data from that photo. So that's one way your victim would have to remove the data immediately, but there's gonna be easier ways that we're gonna talk through here shortly. So let's think about for uh, not only for, for domestic violence victims uh, as far as protecting themselves, but let's think of our other roles here with probation parole. Uh, you have clients that are posting media shots. You're able to somewhat identify where they are, right? So they're out of where they're supposed to be. They're not where they're supposed to be. We can track specifically where they are, but there's a cause, a pause there, and we're going to get to that shortly. So Again, one solution here, if you're using an iPhone, is going to be go to location services, and we're going to get rid of that precise location on the camera. So we would go to our privacy setting, settings, privacy, location services, camera, and we would not allow access or not allow precise location. That's an option. But there are other options, and we're going to talk through that. A problem we have, a big problem we have, is that that data, the data that we just talked about, the very specific data, unfortunately, too, can be manipulated. And in the newest version of iPhone, these are screenshots. And uh, when I got my, my new phone here, uh, guess what? You go to the photo gallery, and if you click the up, uh, the, bot, the, the left display there on the bottom where you would share the file, the far left corner, you can go down and it's gonna have an option to adjust settings. So now as a victim of domestic violence, this is great, right? Because now before, say I take a picture and I don't wanna be inconvenienced to have to go home, get it on my computer, adjust the, the onset, or even go into my computer or my cell phone rather to say, hey, remove these settings. 
Now what you can do is actually uh, hit that option and you see the adjust option on the right part of the screen, the right photo. You can actually adjust and make the location somewhere different. You can actually adjust the time and make it different and then save it to your phone. And if you post that image on social media, it'll strip the data and have the false data there. Uh, or you can just strip it. Now, does that cause those in law enforcement to have a long pause here? Yes, absolutely. Because up front, most people are not going to do this. They're not going to take the time to manipulate data. But does this mean that we have to pause and have a real concern here? Absolutely. Am I going to base a search warrant or an arrest warrant based solely on metadata from a photo? Absolutely not. It's investigative information. It's to assist you because it can be manipulated. Could you use it as a part of a probable cause in the search warrant? Absolutely. But you can't use it as the sole entity and represent that as absolutely the truth because now we know it can be adjusted. And I got to tell you, I went in and adjusted it and it does work. You can adjust it to be at any location you want, an address, a physical address. You can uh, actually make the time in the future or in the past. You can make it any time. So it is a big pause. So check that out on your phones as far as your iPhones. So again, this is just walking through that removal of the GPS data and walking you through it. The uh, same is true on, on Windows 10. The right click details, properties, details, remove personal and, and uh, properties, detail, and you can adjust it and remove it. But I mean, that's a real big pause for us, right? Because uh, yeah, I, I know there's been a lot of cases that a lot of information is based on that metadata. It's not absolute. It can be modified. So again, 90, 95%, no one's going to know about it. No one's going to adjust that data, but we have to pause. And now we know it can happen. So for, for like a monitoring, a probation parole, yeah, certainly you can use it, uh, but just use it with a, a, a pause there, not as absolution certainly to question a client as far as where they were, what they were doing, but not as a, uh, an absolute sole source for a violation or something like that. So technology is great. It's there and we can certainly use it, but it can be obviously modified as well. Here's another thing that I, I came across recently, which is somewhat disturbing for domestic violence victims uh, and, and could be actually a resource for law enforcement. This is a link locator. This is an app that you can go on. A, it's a website actually that you can go to and you can get their services. There is a fee involved. And what it involves is actually you being able to send someone a link. So you generate a, a, a link, you send it to that person. If they click on it on their cell phone and they have Google location services, uh, services enabled, you get an exact location of where they are. So again, a pause, a pause here to say that for law enforcement personnel, you need to pause and check with your prosecutor. You need to check with your uh, parole probation supervisor, see if this is a technology that they're going to accept and say, yes, we can use for tracking at someone uh, and, and just pause before you use it. Uh, but again, for domestic violence victims, a big pause when we're talking to them and we're giving them guidance. We all know from, from news, from technology, we get these crazy links, right? We get these crazy text messages. We get these emails, uh, you know, whether they spell the, the store name wrong or if you click on the email address that it came from, it's certainly something that did not come from that business entity. Uh, and we immediately delete it. We don't click on anything, right? This is why, because if you click on that link, they can get information from you. So another pause here. And again, these things are constantly changing, but general rules, general rules that I'll say to you are going to be three things. Do not have Bluetooth enabled in a public environment, only in the privacy of your home or somewhere where you're isolated. Wi-Fi should be not enabled uh, when you're out in public. And consider a virtual private network, which we'll talk about a little bit later. VPN services that bounce your location so that you can't be tracked specifically. So let's talk about that same EXIF data and how it pertains to videos. Well, here's another website, Metadata to Go, another few, a free online EXIF viewer that will do videos. The same information that we talked about with photographs is actually transmitted with video files as well. So anything we're posting on social media, anything we're doing on uh, with, with public posts, 
it's all going to contain this information as far as videos. Again, unless you have those abilities disabled on your device. Hold on one second here. Apologize. So, in, and in these cases, what we would be doing is we would be going to this website again, and we upload the video file like shown here. And, and hold on. Okay, hold on one second. For some reason, my slide's not working now. Hold on. And once you upload it, you're going to get the same kind of metadata that we got before. Hold on one second here. And technology. Hold on. Okay. Give me one second here. I apologize, guys. When it works, it's great. So again, same ability, same capabilities, and what we're doing here. Uh, let's see. And I'm having an uh, issue here with the PowerPoint, Karen. Hold on one second. I don't know what's going on. You're good. If if you can't resolve it, we can take a break for a minute. Oh, give me one second here. Okay. The joys of technology. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I blame Karen. You blank? You're blank? I blame Karen. Oh, sorry. Okay. No. I thought you said we were blank. I was like, oh, great. That's par for the course. Thanks, Cher. Okay. I'm going to close this out and go back in. I apologize. It's like the PowerPoint froze up. Okay. I'll tell you what, Karen, since it's 1025, why don't we do the 10 minute break now and I'll sort this out and get it up and running. How's that sound? Everyone, it's 1025. If you could just be back online at 1035, I would appreciate it. And if everyone could check their chat, there's a couple people that I'm not sure who you are. If you've responded already, great. If not, if you could just let me know who you are, I would appreciate it. And I'll see you back at 1035. Thank you. Sounds good. Thanks. I'll work this out. Okay. Welcome back. Sorry, I think we got the technology issues worked out. Uh, the same issue is uh, correct with videos. And again, same process, load it up, and it gives you all that crazy metadata. And yeah, we didn't get it worked out, Karen. Hold on. Oh, there we go. Okay. Video, we're going to talk about spy cams and nanny device cams. Nanny cams, I'm not as concerned with because they've locked down the technology. A lot of what we're going to deal with are going to be hidden cameras. And I got to tell you, professionally, I've had interaction with these devices on multiple occasions, and it is highly, highly disturbing. Uh, it makes you look uh, everywhere you wouldn't normally look and makes you very paranoid. Uh, video cameras are overt and covert uh, in the size of them. I mean, we're looking at some on the screen here that are somewhat dated, obviously, as far as like the clock. But these devices are crazy. I mean, they can be installed anywhere. When I say hidden cameras, I'm talking about a camera that's capable of audio and video recording and it's placed in common devices that we have access to and contact with every day that Again, I refer back to that interview with the detective in one of the initial videos for, for victims of domestic violence. If something appears in our house that wasn't there before, it's a reason for pause if suddenly we think like we're being tracked or like our offenders given, given us very specific information that they shouldn't know unless they were in our house or had access to our phone. We should pause there and take a look at, hey, what's new here? Did he do any work here? Did he leave something here? Did he leave a cell phone charger here? 
Did he, he give us a gift of something that suddenly all of a sudden this is happening? Because to find these is not, not an easy task uh, as we're gonna talk through. I mean, here's a sample of a hidden camera that's actually in a, a clothing hook uh, that can be mounted on a wall. The capabilities of these is, is unbelievable. And we're gonna talk and, and go through this very specifically. Simple, small things that can be placed in, in general view that you would have no idea that they were there. And the capability of their recording is just uh, unbelievable. And our, our best friend here is actually somewhere where we normally go for shopping and it's gonna be Amazon. I mean, coffee makers, water bottles, rocks, anywhere and anything. So let's go to, let's go to Amazon. So already I've given you some of my personal information. Oh wait, no, this is good. It signed in on a neutral, neutral account. Usually when I pop this up, my wife's name occur, uh, pops up on our Amazon account because she likes to know what I'm buying, uh, which is probably a good thing because I'm a gadget guy. But what we did here is just a search on Amazon. Are you seeing that screen? The Amazon search, Karen? Yep, we're okay. good. Good, okay. So this is Amazon, right? This is just an Amazon search for spy cameras. Look at the size of some of these, that top one, mini wireless Wi-Fi IP camera, HD. Imagine the ability to place that anywhere to record. My favorite one is the phone charger, the USB charger there. There it's listed for 37. I found it for as little as $25. Uh, and also below that, uh, I've had personal access to that spy camera on the pen. Uh, that works extremely well. And again, has capability to plug right into a computer to download the files. Uh, you have real-time access to these devices as well through your uh, smartphone. But just look through some of these. Uh, the, the USB charger, the, th the cell phone charger is very popular. There's a digital, or a, I'm sorry, a, a camera or a, a yeah, clock on our end table there. We have smoke detectors. We have anything and everything. We have key fobs, uh, key fob 2988 for that one. And it records off the end. As you look at these and if you're in law enforcement, you're gonna see a lot of things that look familiar if you've done covert recording with court orders, court orders because law enforcement, they have special sites for recording devices that are used. And uh, I mean, I've seen all sorts of variety to include like large sunglasses that I wouldn't recommend that look like, you know, you're, you're 90 years old while driving down the road. Uh, that stick out a little bit on someone that's 20 years of age, but they have some really good ones too. Here is an actual uh, charging port for a cell phone that has a hidden camera in it, $59. And beyond what you're seeing here at Amazon, there are also other uh, very specific websites for spy cameras that get very expensive uh, in cost. But what I'd like to do is talk to you about, um, hold on here, is talk to you about the ability uh, let's see, the ability to install them covertly and to, and to their capabilities. Uh, let's also look at something else on Amazon, and that's going to be the GPS tracking, because you saw that previous video there and saw the capabilities of, of what was done to that particular victim when you go on your friend Amazon. And again, I'm not, I'm not criticizing Amazon here for selling these things, because they're going to sell them based on the ability to track your car, to track your loved one, make sure they're safe, that they all have, you know, potentially very good reasons for possibly using these devices. But again, it's how it is used that becomes the problem. Look at the size of that GPS tracker. It's very small. It's very small and these work very well. I have individuals that I'm in contact with that have actually acquired these and have used them for experimental pur purposes and, and they work very well and it's real time on your, on your device. You can see it real time. So, I mean, the access is instant there. So we could track someone real time uh, and see everything that's going on there. Hold on, okay. So just an example of what's out there. Let's talk about a real life incident. Uh, this is a hidden camera arrest that occurred about two years ago. And this is a link to the, uh, the news release on it. What we're going to do is actually play this video for you. Maybe. 
Okay. Let's get through this ad. My Anderson WeatherNet system. See the weather as it happens in your area. From cameras tracking every county in central PA. Made possible by Renewal by Anderson. Franklin County man who worked in the emergency medical field is accused of collecting child pornography. Yeah, Michael Bragg allegedly took photos and videos of neighborhood kids and had videos of patients in the emergency department while they were changing. ABC 27 investigator Logan Wilson is live in the newsroom with more. Logan. Matt and Val, 39-year-old Michael Bragg was arrested Friday. He faces more than 30 felony charges related to child pornography. Agents with the Attorney General's office searched Bragg's Chambersburg home and took his cell phone and laptop computer. According to court documents, images and videos of child pornography were found on the devices, including one image that appears to be a Bragg inappropriately touching a girl. Investigators also found videos of neighborhood children using the bathroom, as well as secretly recorded videos of patients in the emergency department undressing or getting dressed. Now, those videos are part of a separate ongoing investigation. It's unclear where those videos were taken. However, ABC 27 News confirmed that Bragg was an employee with UPMC Pinnacle Carlisle. He has since been terminated. The hospital released a statement saying in part, we are shocked and appalled by the allegations and are fully committed to cooperating with investigative authorities. We've reached out to the attorney general's office for more information about this case, but we have not heard back. Bragg is in the Franklin County Jail without bail. In the newsroom, Logan Wilson, ABC 27 News. You know, a lot of people say when you're going somewhere, you don't want to look back. So what we want to do is consider a couple of things here. For domestic violence victims, obviously, we want to consider the fact that use of these type of recording devices for getting very personal images of yourself, but also for personal awareness and also for law enforcement, for personal awareness in that everywhere you go, these devices could be there and could be watching what you're doing. So in this particular case, this was a child pornography search warrant. And during the search warrant, it was uncovered through a forensics review on scene that there were recordings, uh, recordings that included uh, over 300 patients at a, an emergency room where this guy was employed. And something like this can be done with a device just like this, 1995 on Amazon. And let me talk to you about the capabilities of this particular device. device. This device has the capability to, number one, it appears to be an iPhone charger or any phone charger, actually. You can plug it in the wall. It actually works as a charger. And also what it has is a micro SD card in it that will permanently, obviously, record the video recordings. You can set this particular recorder to be either motion activated or activated by Bluetooth remotely from your cell phone. So I could be within a 30-foot range of this device and be viewing it live on my cell phone. Uh, and it appears to be totally normal. But one thing is unique in this device and these USB chargers are becoming very popular as covert recorders. So if you have these around, the thing you wanna look for is that camera, uh, the camera lens right on the front of it. If you look at two devices next to each other that are phone chargers, the illegitimate one is gonna have that little hole there. You gotta look for that. These work extremely well and 1995. Uh, I got to tell you, the recording capabilities, uh, the resolution and the storage capacity on there, you're talking thousands of videos on a micro SD card. Uh, it's insane, uh, the amount of data you can store. You saw this previously in the video pertaining to GPS uh, tracking devices. Just another slide, just to alert you to the locations uh, that, that possibly they could be concealed in your vehicle. It's a common sense approach. Uh, a lot of times, again, you're going to need advanced assistance from a technological unit from the state police or the attorney general's office to try to detect these. But two, consider who has the best knowledge of something that shouldn't be there, especially if you're looking under the undercarriage of your car. That, that would be my mechanic, you know, having him take a look at it if I think I'm being tracked. So, I mean, just a slide for your reference. And, and these cameras, they're not just things that are, are can be put somewhere. They're things that you can carry with you. They can be on ties. They can be on the old MP3 recorders, the, the phone chart, or I'm sorry, the car remote starts. 
Uh, there's all sorts of crazy things. Watches. I've seen the watch used actually before. That worked very well. Again, as a camera and audio recorder. So we have to be aware. There's those glasses I referred to. They kind of stick out in the crowd a little bit. Actually, ID cards can have hidden cameras built into them as well, the smaller ones that we referenced earlier. So, I mean, the technology is endless. Baby monitors have, have really locked down a lot, so I'm not going to dwell too much on that. It's just a matter of Bluetooth and uh, Wi-Fi security. Another thing we need to be talking to our victims about is at the house having secured Wi-Fi. It's something that we uh, assume everyone has, but if I drive around a neighborhood, I can, I can assure you I'm going to find homes that don't have secured Wi-Fi. And I can operate off their Wi-Fi from the curb and do whatever I want. And it's going to come back to them, unfortunately. So uh, the hidden cameras, uh, this is going to sound crazy and the video is going to even look crazier. But yes, there are ways to, to uh, detect these devices. And let's watch this. Now, more than ever, our privacy is under attack because there are tiny hidden cameras watching and recording us all the time everywhere even in our most intimate moments without our knowledge these tiny cameras are found all the time in dressing rooms hotel rooms public bathrooms apartments locker rooms and places you didn't think possible the spy finder pro puts an end to concerns of privacy invasion by instantly uncovering all hidden camera lenses which are spying on you this easy to use pocket-sized detector can go along with you anywhere. To use the Spy Finder Pro, look through the viewfinder while pushing the button on top to activate the six super bright LED strobe lights. These special red lights are specifically engineered to bounce off of the reflective surface, which all camera lenses have, no matter how big or small they may be. Now with MaxiBoost LED technology, there are three LED intensity modes that allow you to better control and hone in on the area you are sweeping. High is best for larger rooms and open office or living spaces, and low is best for smaller rooms, bathrooms, dressing rooms, and shiny surfaces such as plastic or glass. In a slow sweeping motion, scan the room, looking at all surfaces until you are confident the room is clean and free from potential hidden cameras. Even if the camera is turned off, you'll clearly see that the camera lens is blinking back to you up to 45 feet away. Put a stop to the invasion of your privacy before it starts. Get your Spy Finder Pro now. Just what we want to see, all of us walking around with our eyes to the Spy Finder, but uh, kind of humbling. The price is actually a little bit lower now, and there are other alternatives that you can purchase, possibly something for an advocate group to maybe uh, take a look at and maybe purchase as a resource for victims of domestic violence that feel that they're being spied on. Uh, it does work again, uh, and it's working off that camera lens. That's what it's looking for, and the camera does not have to be active. It's just looking for the lens. Uh, a coworker of mine actually acquired it, and uh, we did a, a job with it, and it actually did work. Uh, so I'll say that. So photos and videos, what else do we have to worry about? Yeah, our cells, right? They're, they're permanently attached to us, but, and we're going to come back to that in great detail later on. Uh, but for now, let's blur through this. I would like to talk a little bit about facial recognition. Facial recognition software is there. Uh, you saw it in the Google uh, face recognition as far as the loading up the photograph and looking for facial recognition. It's out there and it's all over the place. And when I say all over the place, retailers are using uh, facial recognition. They're using them for tracking customers in stores. They're tracking them to see our age, gender, how much time we spend at a particular display, and they're using it for marketing purposes. And they're also using facial rec for detecting shoplifters that were known offenders that were arrested previously. Uh, facial recognition is an awesome and valuable tool. Uh, I went for my pre-check on my uh, TSA and uh, they didn't ask me to take my glasses off and not smile for, for a nice reason, right? They're running me through facial recognition, making sure I'm not in any groups that I shouldn't be and trying to gain access to planes. It's great when it's a security feature that's used in our, for our protection. Uh, you know, in your own personal perspective, you can come to with, with regards to shopping, uh, but it's out there and it's being used. It's also being used by law enforcement uh, for tracking offenders. Uh, you recall the Canadian uh, truck uh, convoy that took place in Canada last year. Uh, I have a friend who actually works with the Ottawa Police Department, 
and they used uh, a law enforcement version of facial rec uh, for that entire incident. And it was very productive for them in identifying uh, known members of different groups that they were keeping an eye on. So, I mean, just know that the technology is out there, you know? So let's talk about uh, cell phones and caller ID and, call and cell phone technology. Um, we're gonna blur through a, a lot of this because a lot of it has to do with how caller ID works and so forth. Big picture here, it's gonna be there for as a, as a reference for you. Uh, big picture, most of us are just using cell phones. A lot of us don't even have a house phone anymore. So we have to talk about protecting ourselves when we're on the phone. And we have to talk about when we look at that phone and we see a number, it's happened to all of you, right? We see a phone number, we look at it, we're like, uh, nothing good can come of this. Uh, you, you know, where it's coming from or the, the phone number. Big picture is on our cell phones, you cannot trust anything that's taken place in that phone as far as caller ID. Most humbling day for me was a day where I get a phone call and I look at my phone and it's my own number calling me. That's called a clue, right? Uh, so we can spoof, we can do anything we want with these, <clears throat> with phone numbers. So what we have to do is consider our caller ID and our blocking options. There are some that are offered by phone companies. Uh, you can do the star 67 to activate uh, and go through the blocking services. Big picture here though, it doesn't always work, right? So we have to consider options. Uh, we really have to look at other ways to protect ourselves as far as that cell phone. And we're gonna talk about a couple options. Uh, Google Voice is the best thing you can possibly do for yourself. If you don't have Google Voice, we're gonna talk through that. Uh, obviously, uh, you can't block calls to 911, uh, 800 numbers, no, they're not blocked as well. But generally speaking, I don't trust any number that's appearing on my caller ID. I mean, that's the short answer here. There are apps that you can have. Uh, you can contact your phone company to see what they have for you. You can install call blocking apps like shown here uh, that will automatically block calls from hidden numbers. Uh, you can go to other apps called like True Caller. Uh, caution with some of these though too. Apps are, are great when they work and they do what they're supposed to do. Any app I install, number one, I'm not going to purchase any app off of anything other than approved app stores, your Apple, your Android, approved app stores, because generally speaking, they'll do some research on them before they put them up on their store. However, the third party apps, very, very hesitant. Uh, in fact, I have installed none because I don't trust them. Also, it's, it's a matter of customer preferences. What you should be doing is Google searches on your apps before you install them. See what the pros and cons are here, because some of these services like TrueCaller, you share your contact information and it goes in a call database. So, I mean, uh, I'm hesitant to use them. Uh, here's another one, trap call, uh, unmasking calls that are calling. Uh, just different references that you can go to and, and, and look at later on. Uh, we're gonna talk about VoIP, uh, voice over internet protocol. And we're gonna talk about the different kinds here. We have all sorts of kinds, Skype, Magic Jack, Vonage, Viber, and many others. Uh, it's voice over internet. Uh, it is, there is a, an impact for VoIP. Uh, caller ID is either unavailable, masked, or all zeros, all nines. Communication is obviously, uh, well, it's, it's encrypted, and it can be preset to a cell phone or virtual number. So what we're going to do is talk about my favorite topic here under VoIP, and that is uh, Google Voice. Number one, for victims of domestic violence, Absolutely. Absolutely a great resource, especially if they've broken off from the offender, they're trying to reestablish themselves in life. Uh, perhaps they're interacting with people that they don't have a total trust for, but they want to have communication with. For probation, parole, it enables you to have a number that's not a permanent number. That's something that you can get rid of if you just need to have temp temporary contact with someone. You'll also find that people that engage in Facebook uh, Marketplace or uh, all the different websites for selling things will use VoIP numbers for, for contact. Google Voice, the best protocol here is if you use it for personal use, it's free. So it's awesome. And I have it. And it's an awesome tool because you can do a variety of things with Google Voice. Uh, you can create a number. Uh, you can create a number out of your area. You could go to California and have a number out there if you wanted. Uh, you can choose an area code that's similar to yours. 
it assigns you a number you download the app you have it on your phone and what what this is is a virtual uh, it's a, a a VoIP number where someone you can give someone that that number and they can contact you only through that number uh, on your own cell phone it will not reveal any identifying information pertaining to your real phone number it'll just have the VoIP number that you've assigned to it you can also go to uh, messaging with it you can message text with it Another great feature is you can uh, choose a voicemail and if a person leaves a voicemail, you have options where you can actually have the voicemail transcribed and automatically sent to your email. So if you're trying to do something where you're documenting some contact for, between someone, say it's, say it's even an offender or say it's a, a client of your probation or parole agent and they leave a voicemail message on that uh, phone line, you're going to get it transcribed in an email as to what the content was. Obviously, you got to double check it, make sure it's all valid, but it is an excellent tool and it's for free. It's, it's a great source for uh, remaining anonymous, not having someone know your, your personal number. And again, once you're done with that number, you can toss it. You can get rid of it. You can go back to Google Voice and get another number, a new number. Uh, as far as I know, the protocols, when I got it installed, they didn't have limitations. I'm being told there might be some limitations now as far as number of numbers in a month. So just a resource, something for you to play with. Let's talk about some caller ID spoofing apps. Again, craziness, right? Uh, all sorts of uh, different things that are being used for fraudulent purposes as far as scamming elderly people, as far as uh, potential someone contacting a victim of domestic violence, pretending to be a police officer or a detective, seeing that they filed a complaint. Uh, say you look at your, your caller ID and it's a phone number, and you plug the phone number into the internet and do some research on it, and you find that it comes back to whatever local police department that that victim resides in, and now they have a, a faith in that number, uh, or while they're waiting for the, to answer the call, they do that, and then they answer the call, and someone pretending to be a police officer, you can spoof your caller ID through paid services and free services, where you can plug in the number you want to be displayed on the caller ID of the person you're calling, uh, and the number you're calling and it automatically does the call for you. So big picture here is do not trust any number that shows up on your caller ID. Uh, again, you can purchase it. Uh, there are some free apps. Essentially, you call an access number, enter a PIN number, enter the number you want to call, enter the number that you want to be displayed on the caller ID of the person you're calling, and boom, you got it. And now there's apps that do the same thing real time on your phone. Uh, all sorts of different spoofing services. Again, we're just going to fly through some of these uh, and give you a cost possibility here. There's some cost there. It's not expensive. Spoof cards, spoof uh, apps. So again, big picture, victims should not be trusting anyone. There's been scams where elderly people have been called by someone purporting or they'll get an email purporting to be someone and you know the Target gift cards thing. Uh, and then they'll get a phone call and a lot of those calls have been spoofed. And when the, the elderly victims looking at the phone number, they'll Google it and they'll see it comes back to the bank that the, you know, they're, they're saying that they're, they're calling from and they'll have instant trust there. Uh, it's something we really have to pause on. Do not trust your phone for any caller ID purposes. Okay. Oops, apologize. Making a spoof call through the website is very easy and will only take a few steps. I'm going to show you how. First, log in to your account on spoofcard.com. Once you're on the dashboard, you want to be sure the Place Your Call tab is selected. Enter the destination number. This is the number of the person you want to call. Next, enter the spoof number. This is the number you want to show on that person's caller ID. SpoofCard offers options to change your voice and record the call as well. You can also choose from a list of different background noises to add to your call. Once you're ready, click Place Your Call. You will receive an access number, which you will need to call so that your spoof call can be connected. Dial the access number and wait for the call to connect. SpoofCard then does the rest. You've now made a successful spoof call. Thanks for watching and for using SpoofCard. Thank <laughs> you.
Again, just showing the ease and and how this can be done. <clears throat> Anyone can do it. It's inexpensive. It's difficult to determine the actual calling party. The, the advantage for law enforcement is that a lot of these are purchase apps. So you're going to have a credit card that's associated with the purchase. So it's not like an impossible thing to trace. Uh, they also have ability that they can record voice and change options. So like, like on some of these spoofed apps, what they can do is actually have uh, a staged background. Like I could have the background noise of an airport, of a grocery store, or anywhere that I was wanted to purport to be from, and it can be playing in the background. You may have heard of like swatting pranks where law enforcement will respond to a house based on a report of a barricaded gunman with hostages and how it turns out to be an innocent party. Uh, this is how they're doing those kind of things. So again, uh, if you use the star 69 or star 57, it's just gonna give you the spoofed number. Uh, A and I can also be spoofed you look, got to look at the billing records of the accused. That's the only way you're going to really track these things. So, I mean, just knowledge for victims that phone calls they get, even if people seem convincing as far as to their role in the scenario that's going on, uh, cause, co just cause some pause there. Uh, you have to pause and check out the information, use a common sense approach here. Here's all the different, uh, not all the different, here's examples of the different spoofing apps that you can go to. Again, it's in the PowerPoint for your reference. Caller ID spoofing apps. I mean, you do searches in your app store for these services and it's endless. Uh, it's crazy, the number of things that we have here. Is it actually illegal? If you're gonna do cause or cause def defraud or cause harm or wrongfully use and obtain anything of value, federal law says it is. If you're playing a joke on someone, technically it's not. There is obviously, uh, there is a law enforcement exception, uh, but yeah, it's not legal. Let's move on to virtual numbers. Again, virtual numbers are, a virtual number is a telephone number without a directly associated telephone line or instrument. Numbers are programmed to forward incoming calls to one or more preset telephone numbers choose by the subscriber. So you never have to give out your actual phone number. So who uses it? Legitimate people, obviously, but also people involved in criminal activity and, yep, stalkers and domestic violence offenders. Obviously a use. You can screen your incoming calls. You can either answer it, send it directly to your voicemail. You can give them a busy signal, have a playback or recording that the number's out of service, create a custom message. So again, virtual numbers. And here's a list of some uh, different uh, virtual number services that are out there. And again, tossable digits, this is an example of one, and that's just showing you some price comparisons. Again, not expensive to acquire, easy to use, uh, just using technology to benefit them in their own way. Does it have a legitimate purpose? As always, yes, it can, but uh, yeah, we can use it for a bad purpose as well. Google Voice, we talked about already, that's a, a dated version of the Google Voice display. The previous one was more current, and again, uh, same deal I talked about before. Uh, you get alerts as to the phone call coming in. You don't have to give out your real number and they're never gonna know that it's you. Uh, I have it, I use it for business and I use it for personal as well. Uh, and I switch it out like every three, four months is what I do. Just to have that number for personal protection, personal security, for those people that you're not quite sure that you wanna have that long-term uh, interaction with. So we're gonna fly through some of this and the Google Voice features here and move on. Virtual numbers, another, uh, a new, this is another virtual number app, Burner, same kind of deal, walking you through it. Uh, purchase prices, you are involved, you have to pay for this. Again, just another option and different pricing as well. Flip, another one. All these are out there, legitimately used. MySudo is another one. Different pricing options, Android and iOS. So never trust the numbers we're looking at. This is kind of a really interesting graphic that just kind of uh, is humbling to us as we walk around with the cell phone. Uh, and we walk everywhere with it, right? I mean, our society has become 
to a point where we were so engaged in our phone, if you, especially uh, post COVID now, walking into to an office in Harrisburg, it's really humbling that as you walk down the street, everyone's totally engaged in that phone. Uh, my three-year-old granddaughter is able to play videos and go through the phone faster than uh, most, uh, most of their great-grandparents. Uh, it's crazy. Uh, we have instant access to technology, but we're being consumed by that. For domestic violence victims, that's real common sense approach to personal safety and security there is put that phone in the purse, put that phone away. We have to, we're losing total connectivity to personal safety and security awareness. As we walk to a car after work, as we walk down the street, we're not in tune with our surroundings anymore. We're so engrossed in that phone, uh, we're losing attention. We, uh, coming from law enforcement background, I, I have my phone in my pocket. I, as I round corners in the city, I'm very alert to my surroundings. I'm very alert to how I round a corner or how I approach an entrance way to a business or to my aware, uh, my awareness of my surroundings is very good. My, my daughter, my oldest daughter teases me uh, because she said I, I've, I've scarred her for life now because she actually is in tune with what I'm saying because she, now she has her own children. And as we're out places, she'll, she'll come to me and say, yeah, you, you scarred me, dad, because now look, I'm looking at the same guy you're looking at. It's called personal awareness. It's not paranoia. It's awareness. It's just having your antennas go up. Your victims have to be aware of their personal surroundings and what's right and what's not right from our previous uh, visits to a particular location. But we consider our connectivity as we walk around with that phone and how it tries to connect to internet locations that are open Wi-Fi. It doesn't matter if your Wi-Fi is open or closed, your phone's tracking you as they attempt to connect to you. Uh, but yeah, we want to have it closed in a public environment. And then we start using apps and everything we do is tracked because we've allowed access to all our apps. That's another thing we want to look at is our access that our apps has to our phone. You know, all those pop-ups you get where it says, hey, such and such app wants access to this or that. Why do they need access to all these things? It's called doing a personal safety uh, checkup of our phone and also our social media accounts. And in the reference guide that you're going to get in conjunction with this program, there are walkthroughs for the major ones that you can actually walk through and do. Some pause too, though, things always change. So uh, follow them through and, and check them out. Let's talk just about some wireless facts. Average user of a cell phone is going to touch, tap, or click it 2,617 times a day. Think about it. We're always touching our phones. We're always doing things with our phones. 47% of U.S. smartphone users say they couldn't live without their devices. 95% of adults in South Korea have own a smartphone. The average time spent on a smartphone is two hours and 51 minutes a day. Worldwide, more people own a cell phone than a toothbrush. That's really concerning. <laughs> and about, and there'll be about 2.87 billion smartphone users uh, in 2020. And 57% are using the cell phones for our mobile access as far as internet searches. This is what our life has become. Uh, we're not in touch with our surroundings. We have to have our victims being alert to our surroundings. And you as law enforcement members, as you go into houses, as you do things, we got to put the phones away. We got to be alert and in tune with our surroundings. We can do everything and everything <clears throat> on the phone. We wake up, we use it as our alarm. We text people. We check in with people. We check our Facebook. We take pictures. We store our videos and store audio recordings. Everything we do is done on the phone. Think about your day and how you walk through a day with a phone. Read books, alarm clock track our fitness activities, uh, all the different things that our phones can do. Our phones have become portable computers. They are portable computers. So mobile data traffic around the world is projected to increase by 700% between 16 and 2021. It's already there. You know, and COVID didn't help that, right? Uh, apps account for 89% of mobile media time. Other 11% is on websites. Android still is the clear leader. 74% of people have Android's iOS is about a 22, 23%. 70% of web traffic happens on our, our mobile devices. Uh, crazy stats, but that's where our world's going to. And, uh, and, our, and our phones have become like, almost like devices we would use for what we would use, normally use a computer for, we can do on our, our phones. 
So you have all those personal things on your phone. I think about my phone. I have all sorts of personal family information. I have pins and passwords to all my different accounts. I have work and family related addresses, work emails are on there as well, text messages, all my recent uh, call history. We got to keep our data safe. Uh, and obviously the best way, number one, is, uh, is obviously uh, passcodes, but we're going to talk through some other different options here as well. Here is one potential option for you. We have a story now that should raise red flags for all of us who rely on our cell phones. It turns out that just about any one of them can be transformed into a bugging device worthy of the CIA in just a few minutes. And as Lisa Fletcher is here to tell us, it doesn't take a spy to do it. Lisa? No, oh, it sure doesn't, George. You know, we've all heard the stories about how the GPS in your phone can track you, but we had no idea how much about your personal life that people can learn through your cell phone until we met a woman whose cell phone nearly cost her her life. He knew where I was all the time. If I was at dinner somewhere, he would text me and ask me how dinner was. Susan says her ex-boyfriend stalked her for three years using only her cell phone to do it. She's so afraid for her life, she asked us to disguise her identity. I thought I was going crazy. It's just unnerving knowing that somebody 24 seven knows where you're at, what you're talking about, what's going on, everything about you. At the time, Susan didn't know that her ex-boyfriend installed widely available software on her phone when she wasn't looking. Once installed, he could be anywhere, even in a different state, and track her every move. He could listen in on her phone calls, read her text messages, and turn her personal cell phone into a bugging device. He would text me, how was dinner? Was the date good? Did you enjoy yourself at Fridays? She feared for her life and called the police who put her in protective custody and put him in jail. When he got out of jail, within 20 minutes, he was outside my hotel room. When somebody remotely activates your phone, you're not gonna know it. And they can use that phone to monitor the conversations uh, in the room that you're in. Security expert Robert Siciliano gets countless emails from victims of cell phone spying. Your phone could be sitting next to you while you're watching TV and somebody can actually log into your phone and they can watch what you are watching on television. We found thousands of sites promoting this type of software, boasting products to catch cheating spouses, bug meeting rooms, or track your kids. But ultimately, this software enables anyone to do exactly what Susan's ex-boyfriend did. Someone can easily install a spyware program on your phone that allows them to see every single thing that you do all day long via the phone's video camera. Here's how it works. For as little as 50 bucks, you can download cell phone spy software. With her permission, I installed the software on a colleague's phone and sent her out to see how it worked. And everyone else in the family is doing good? No. I've just stop. intercepted a live phone call. She has no idea that I'm listening in. And the most frightening part of this technology? She doesn't even need to be on the phone. Or like I've seen pop rocks. <laughs> I can remotely activate her speakerphone and hear everything going on. Susan even changed her number 10 times. I'd go and change my number at the cell phone store and he would be calling me on my way home on my new cell phone number. After three terrifying years, Susan realized the software was on her phone. She got a new one and it seems the nightmare has ended. You're never the same after this. I think you become a lot more aware of your surroundings. You just make it day to day and keep living. And by now you are probably wondering how is this legal? And that is the gray area with all of this. George, it is legal to sell, but not necessarily legal to use. Well, I don't, I don't think I get that, but let's let's get let's get down to some practical tips for people. Uh, it took Lisa three years to find out if how long does how can you tell if this spyware is on your phone and how can you get rid of it if it is? It's tough. Um, our experts say you look for a couple of things. If the screen on your phone lights up and you're not using it, that's a sign. If you get unsolicited text messages, that's a clue. And if you hear ambient noise when you're on the phone, that could be a sign that there's soft uh, spyware on the phone. What you can do is two things. One, get rid of the phone entirely, get a new phone, or call your cell phone service provider and have them walk you through the reinstallation of the operating system. Our experts tell us when you reinstall the operating system, you wipe out any spyware that could be there. Okay, Lisa Fletcher, thanks very much. We have more tips on our web. We have a...
So, I mean, the capabilities here is huge. And you're going to see some apps that can do exactly what that video showed. Uh, I mean, it's it's insane to think that it's out there. But, yeah, you can actually do everything that was described there. You can see real-time text. You can see real-time activity. And you can actually go into the microphone and listen to conversation, even though the phone's not actually up and you're not on a phone call. Uh, also have it has access to the camera. So, I mean, there's different uh, cell phone tapping uh, with spyware. There, there's links that are going to be in the resource guides to you. We're going to walk through a couple things here. So the spyware is craziness, right? So there's apps that you can install on a phone where you can monitor activity. You can see all sent, received, or deleted messages, incoming, outgoing calls, GPS locations, WhatsApp, Snapchat, Instagram, Facebook, right there on the phone. Uh, you're, you're watching it literally real time. Uh, I'm gonna jump through and get to some of this. Some of these have to be installed on the actual physical device, having access to the phone to do the install. Others, you can actually do an, a remote install if the person has access to your online account. Uh, like the iCloud account for your iPhone. Uh, they also have one for tablets. Uh, I mean, anything you want to spy on, you can do it. This was dated. This is back in 2014. That a company was actually indicted uh, and paid a civil fine for actually marketing this kind of spyware. Interestingly enough, interestingly enough, though, the same group of people now own this company and they're advertising it for a legitimate purpose for you know tracking. Uh, your kids' activities, things like that. This is actually a screenshot from a demo where they did a spyware application install on a victim's phone. And this is what you would see real time on your device as to what's happening on their device. You can see uh, exact location. You can see uh, the name, you know, obviously the device name, the phone number. But down below here is where you start seeing you can do live camera access, live screen access, live microphone, screenshot. You can take uh, go into all their timeline activity. Uh, key loggers, uh, you can enable key logger to see what they're typing. Call history, location history, contacts. And then as you go down the screen, the next, the next portion of the screen, you're going to have the top five callers, top five message contacts, latest call. This is real-time information that's occurring real-time. Uh, and this is not of a huge expense for a perpetrator to obtain. The cost, when you look at it, is you're talking $39.99 a month, 40 bucks a month to install that app and have total access. So how do we find it? How do we detect it? Uh, interesting stats here as far as, you know, who's really looked at their spouse's phone, who's looked at their kid's phones. Just some different stats for you to look at later on. Uh, kind of humbling. Uh, our phones are everything to us. We have to keep them locked. We have to turn off our location services for certain apps that don't need access. When I say lock our phone, we need to be changing the passcode periodically. We need to be doing a complex passcode, not one, two, three, four. We need a, a phrase or something longer if our phone enables us to do so, so it's more difficult to go in. If we're sharing that passcode with a domestic partner that we're having a domestic violence incidents with, we have to change it frequently. I know psychological, physical manipulation, trying to get the password out of someone, but access to that phone is huge. Another reference that'll be in the resource guide for you as far as things to look for. So how can we protect our phones? Yeah, we can have antivirus apps, which, which work pretty decently, but uh, phone locator for, for if you lose your phone. And also we have that remote wipe capability. Uh, general tips for seeing something wrong on the phone is included in the resource guide. Uh, common sense things like the uh, screen flickering, increased data usage, um, different things that are occurring our, on our phone that aren't normal. It's really hot. It's always on. Uh, it, the screen flashes up at random times. There'll be a reference guide for you to share with your victims. So yeah, we don't want to let our phone out of our possession, but that's not always possible, right? Uh, again, a list of those reference guys for seeing uh, if we think we might be a victim of spyware. And we're going to talk through how to detect that spyware. Here's a possible solution. It's called Life360. I have a relative that actually uses this, and they're in total uh, commitment to it. They have young kids. GMA cover starts the debate about Life360. That's an app we learned about in Wired that helps parents monitor their kids, but some teens are lashing out online saying it's a violation of privacy. Janae Norman has the story. 
According to thousands of teens on the popular social media app TikTok, parents prying eyes into their personal lives is putting a damper on summer vacation. The hashtag Life360 has been posted over 14 million times as teens vent over the tracking app that allows parents to keep tabs on them in real time and all the time. Life360 is an app designed for families to stay in touch. Once it's downloaded, it allows parents to tap into their cell phone and track while they're driving, including if they speed or get into car trouble. The timing for the app to come available to me just worked out that she had just started driving. Mary tracks her 16-year-old daughter, Anissa, giving her a choice. It was either download the app or not get a car. She said, you can either have this app or you can not have a car. So I went with the app because I like my car. Like most teenagers, Anissa takes her phone everywhere, which meant taking her mother with her. I remember that my first response was, I feel leashed. Mary says it's not about invasion of privacy. I think that the app is not invasive. It gave me an extra layer of protection to know that my daughter was um, not only where she was supposed to be, but also that she was getting there safe. And while teens everywhere might not be fans of the app, Anissa doesn't seem to mind. I think that you have to respect mm. that your parents just want to take care of you and protect you at the, at the same time as, you know, being a teenager mm. and having fun. For Good Morning America, Janae Norman, ABC. Again, a, a good app. Now, uh, Two, that could be used by domestic violence offenders. If they have it installed uh, when the relationship is going well and they continue to have it installed, they can monitor activity. Now, how do we detect these things? Well, there's some, some more expensive ways to detect them and there's some cheap ways to uh, detect them. And this video is excellent for showing you a common sense approach to how to detect it at no cost. Hi, many of you have seen this video on the internet from uh, South Florida's DA about secret apps and how some kids are using apps to hide content on the phones. Um, the video never mentioned how to spot these apps on the phones. What if you have, uh, you're suspecting someone from hiding content from you? What if you're thinking maybe your spouse is cheating on you or someone you care about is sharing content or messages with somebody else and uh, you know it's not appropriate or you know you have this problem? How do you find out? How do you know if someone is using their phone to hide secrets? or high content from you so that you don't find out. I'll show you in this video how to spot it. This is an iPhone 6 Plus, and this is a Samsung Galaxy Note 4. So on the iPhone, I'm gonna show you the secret app over here, the high calculator. So if we start it, it just looks like a regular calculator, right? It actually works like one, just 12 plus uh, two, 14 and clear, it works fine. So you don't expect anything. But if you type the right sequence of numbers and then you press the percentage sign, then it goes to a different screen. And right here is when the person can hide the pictures, for example, in this case. I already did this and then I hid this particular picture of, um, you know, at a restaurant um, where I could hire an, an entire album um, also. So if you see, this picture, I'm going to go over to the list of my my pictures or all my photos, and then here very quickly, I'm going to just show you. Um, these are just family pictures and pictures of different things. And then over here, you will not see a picture of that item um, that I have hidden in the app. So that is an example of an app. And you see how incredibly, um, just disguised it is it's just like a calculator so you'll never know that is used for hidden uh, for hiding content the same we have the same situation on the uh, on the galaxy which is an android phone i have here the calculator and then the same one it just works like a regular calculator but in this one one two three four and the equal sign will take me to a place where i can hide files and I can unhide files. It's the same thing over here. And I can hide a lot of different things here and I can hide uh, entire albums or documents, uh, things I have downloaded, uh, movies over here, music. There is another one called Vault, which is one of the best out there. And this is how it works. It just shows you a keypad. And then if you 
type the right password, it opens up to all the content that you can hide. You can hide, as you can see, photos, videos, SMS and contacts, SMS being uh, messages. Uh, you can log apps if you don't want anyone to open a particular app. Um, Facebook messages that you can back up the content. In this case, I hit this particular picture that you will not be able to find uh, in my list in my gallery. This is just another example of another app that hides content. So now, how do we find out if someone has downloaded these secret apps on their phone? How do we spot them? Okay, so let's go back here to the iPhone first, and then I'll show you exactly what you do first. Go to the App Store and then do a search for secret apps. Okay, just type secret apps. Secret apps or secret app, secret apps. Okay, so the phone is going to start giving you a list of apps that are out there for hiding content. Okay, if you take a quick look as you scroll through, you will see the get icon over here, which means this phone doesn't have that particular app. And then this one does say open. So, so you go, oh, wow. So this one, it's in the secret apps list and it says open. So that means this phone has that app on it. That's how you find out on the iPhone if somebody has a hidden app installed. And as you can see, there are many, many other uh, photo vault and video lock apps. I mean, there is so many, so many private photo vault. There is, I mean, as many of you have seen. And the same is true on the uh, Android device. You start typing it in, it's gonna show you which ones are installed. Same thing could be used for the spy apps that are being installed on phones as well. Start typing in spy app and the same results will come up. Other ways of detection, obviously forensics. That, that's what I did full time, my eight years in the AG's office, my last eight years, and that's what I do privately now. Cell phone forensics, taking a complete look at what's on a phone. This is actually the faceplate of Celebrate, which is a premier law enforcement uh, cell phone forensics tool. Uh, which extracts all data from a phone. It all ha also has a capability to do a malware scan on the device to detect third-party apps that are spyware. So I get inquiries from domestic violence victims and I've done spyware uh, searches on phones trying to detect the apps. I also do a, a visual inspection of the phone as well. Uh, Celebrate is an awesome tool for you in law enforcement. I'm sure you've used it if you're with the, uh, any law enforcement agency. I know parole and probation, you have very limited access. Uh, this is something for tracking offenders that is really of great value because as, as right now, you may be going out to a residence and doing a visual inspection on a phone, looking at internet history, looking at photos. It's nowhere near a complete image uh, picture of what's going on in that phone. For tracking offenders, Celebrate uh, offers great uh, results in internet searches, whether it be in uh, incognito, uh, the red parentheses here on your screen are showing things that were deleted, that were recovered by Celebrate. So you have a perpetrator that was doing searches he shouldn't have been doing or in contact with a minor uh, on a chat app. Uh, this is going to recover some deleted stuff, and it's going to give you a complete picture of all the different apps on the phone. Uh, it's called Celebrate. Uh, it's, out of a, it's an Israeli-based uh, product, uh, which is used by most law enforcement agencies in the United States now. The same can be done with a, a computer. This is just giving you a screenshot of forensic tools for use on a computer hard drive. What would happen is law enforcement or uh, a private examiner would remove a hard drive and copy the hard drive in a forensically sound manner, uh, creating a bit by bit copy of the hard drive and then put it in this platform for analysis. And here you get all sorts of crazy activity as far as on the, on the computer, operating system activity, event logs, uh, user accounts on the account, window event logs, all documents, PDFs, PowerPoints, Excels, uh, all USB devices that were connected to it. Again, for the law enforcement perspective, if you're trying to track something, you see a USB device that you can't find in a house that tells you to dig deeper, keep looking for that USB device. Also, internet search history, uh, phenomenal source for that. Now, these are elevated tools, obviously. These are things that you have to be forensically, you have to receive a uh, advanced training in to do forensically, but these are some of the, the home pages of you and law enforcement, what you would see from a computer forensic search, like in this screen here at the top right, 
say I got this from a gentleman's computer, I could do a keyword search on anything in the entire device. The same is true on Celebrate. Do a dump on a phone, which takes an hour to two hours to do an extraction. Uh, and you can do a keyword search in that top right corner for anything that you want on the entire phone, which will include internet history, content and chats, uh, everything and anything. And then you can individually go through each hit and you can actually create a report of your own based on the search hits that you had of interest. Uh, but again, for the domestic violence perspective, if a victim is uh, suspecting some spyware or some monitoring, do those quick searches initially shown in that video. Do a search to see if the apps are installed on your device. If they are, uh, you got to take steps to remove them, uh, obviously, uh, or alert law enforcement to the fact that they're installed and they were installed without your permission. You got to involve law enforcement if you're going to go ahead and proceed with uh, some type of criminal proceeding against the offender. Uh, it's going to give you a date and time that the apps were installed to potentially narrow down who, who your perpetrator is and build a circumstantial case that leads to uh, hopefully an interview of your, your target offender. So again, just showing you resources that are out there that are available for viewing electronic items. And that the, the computer forensics actually includes, you can do USBs this way, thumb drives, uh, any electronic storage device, external hard drives. Also, what, we'll, what we want to hit on here quick, and I'm running over, Karen, you give me the, the flag when it's time. Time. <laughs> uh, okay. I apologize. Uh, no, there, there I, do have a, I do have a question. So somebody did ask a question, if I could just ask it to you. Absolutely. Um, it says, do you ever recommend getting a plain non-smartphone for security? Yes, that's an excellent idea. A flip phone. A flip phone is probably your safest mechanism for communication. Again, it's not going to have all the abilities and capabilities, but for limited phone calls, it's sometimes going back in time is a good thing. And for safety and security, that's actually an excellent question. And it's a valid point. Flip phone. Yes. Thank you. Does, does anybody else have any questions? If so, you can put it in the chat or you can just shout it out to Rob. Also, what I, what I like to say to everyone here is that you have my personal email incorporated in this PowerPoint that you're going to receive, and you'll have my cell phone number as well. Uh, this isn't just a two-hour relationship here. Uh, I offer this, and I say it because I mean it. We have this partnership with Office of Victim Advocate, and it's a long-term relationship, and not just with them, but with all of you. If you interact with something professionally and you need some guidance, you need a phone call, I answer my phone. You email me, I will respond back. Uh, those resource guides are a whole lot of information. Uh, analyze them. If you have questions, reach out to me. Uh, I appreciate this partnership. Uh, I treasure Karen and, uh, and JR, and uh, we're a good team. But I, I hope we've walked away with some tools for your tool belt, and I want everyone to be safe. Take care of our victims. Be safe out there. Thank, thank you so much, Rob, and, and thank you all for, for being on today. I know this is a ton of information, which is why Rob is kind enough to, uh, we'll, we'll be providing you with all the information in this PowerPoint. It's really useful information, definitely something that you want to keep. Um, for those of you that are still on, um, you're going to get an email from me either later today or tomorrow that has uh, a certificate for completion that you can use as well as a link for a a very, very short survey. I like to make sure that the trainings we're providing are the best quality and are giving you the information that you need. So if you wouldn't mind, the survey is really short. It's only 10 questions. If you wouldn't mind filling out the survey, it's just a, I think it's just yes or no or true or false. We tried to make it really easy, but we just want to make sure that we're providing you with the best information possible so that you're able to do the wonderful work in the field that you do. Um, if anyone has questions, also, um, JR and I will both put our contact information in the chat. Feel free to contact us directly. If you have questions, feel free to contact Rob. And as always, thank you for being here. And thank you for the wonderful work that you do in keeping our community safe. And for those that work with victims, keeping our victims safe. Awesome. Take care, everyone. Thanks, Karen. Rob, do you mind staying on just for a second? No way. Yep, you got me.